What's going on? It's Anton from AntonDaniels.com. I appreciate you guys for continuing to rock with me. They setting up and shooting a movie over there. It's pretty dope. And I uh, got my hot chocolate being prepared. And then I got my eggy over there. So that's where I get my breakfast in the city of Detroit. And then I'm literally like two minutes away from my office. So I can walk over there. But I want to give y'all some insight on the story. Uh, damn. And I don't even want to tell y'all who it's from. Because there'd be people that be close to me and around me that's watching this. But uh, long story short, it was a guy, uh, a young guy, and uh, he put his son, and I guess he got his son in daycare or kindergarten or something like that. And uh, he went to go pick up his son because uh, he went there early. He went up there to go pick up his son early from daycare or whatever it was that he went to pick up his son from. And he wound up seeing his son in a blue dress. They had dressed his son up in a blue dress. I'll finish this story when I get over to the studio. Can you imagine going to pick your son up? Not your daughter, but your son up. And you basically popping in at an unauthorized time because, or not unauthorized, but you popping in at a time that you wasn't normally scheduled to pick up your son. And they're basically impressing upon your son their ideologies and their thoughts Man, I would be so ready to destroy that place and I would not be cool about it. And the funniest part about it is that when they was telling me the story, they actually told me the story and it was like, yo, they was thinking about or they was trying to or threatening to call the police because the guy was so mad and pissed off about what was happening with his son inside of this daycare. Two things. Number one, we have to be very careful. I mean, very, very careful um, about who we let our children around. Because even when it comes to your children getting older, and, and thank God um, that my wife was a stay-at-home mother. We never had to have daycares or any of these type of places raise my child. And we were very intentional with my child. And I decided that I only wanted to have one because I wanted to pour everything I could inside of uh, my child as far as impressing upon her because I truly believe in the word of God and the word of God says, you know, um, basically, you know, put it in your child's early or put it in your children early and they'll never depart from it. Even if, you know, they go away from it or they stumble or they fall. And I believe that, you know, you should allow for them to fail in controlled environments. And that's why it's important for them to be under my tutelage. I didn't want the principles of other people from their households and the things that they, because I don't know these people. I don't know the person that's walking down the street from me, he could be a killer. This girl that's walking down the street from me, she, 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 she could have some stuff going on in her life that's absolutely crazy. And so all we know from people is what they present to us uh, on the outside, the optics. It's another reason why I decide that I always want to want to show the receipts. And a lot of people say, Anton, you show the receipts because you're bragging. Eh. Maybe 20% of it. But the other part of it is because I want to show people that I am actually who I say that I am. If I say that I make this amount of money and that you should listen to me from a financial perspective and the reason why I call it the Millionaire Morning Show, I'm telling you the reason that I call it the Millionaire Morning Show. If I tell you that, hey, this is the relationship advice that you should have, now I'm validating it by showing you that this is how a successful relationship or successful marriage is supposed to be. But when you look at these people, man, you don't know who these people are. You don't know them from Adam. And, you know, I, we we made that up or we, we, we determined that that's the way that we was going to raise our child and that she was not going to work at all until, or she wasn't even going to have the option to work once we decided to have the child um, until my child started going to school full time. Now, that also does not change uh, the other side of it, which is point number two. And one of the reasons why you have to be very careful about even the schools that you send them to, the environments that they raise in, because once they start going to school, especially at a young age, you know, another reason why my wife decided that even once she started going to school full time that she didn't want to work uh, and she just did volunteer work and she participated in other things. And I'm not going to get into that. She went into school and stuff was because. You know, she had to be there. She wanted to be there for every event, every parent-teacher conference. She often at times volunteered at the school. We don't see that within our communities anymore because everybody is remixing what it takes in order to be in a successful relationship, which then affect the children because the children are the ones that's going to suffer. 
And so, whereas daddy had to go and take care of business, and thankfully I was in a position where I also could participate in a lot of that stuff. I was able to go to the parent-teacher conference. Uh, I wasn't missing any of the competitions or anything like that because, you know, I had a position or I had went to school to where I was able to work from home and, you know, um, I did really well from a financial perspective. Once my daughter got to a certain age, I was in that space um, and we had a community, you know what I'm saying? We, we, I was staying with my mom at the time because we had moved back into the house because of what happened during the recession. But then at the same time, it was like, once I started really getting money, it was like, why move out? And we didn't even move out until my daughter was, I don't know, three, four years old. And so she had that. She had that whole thing within her um, as far as that community, her grandmother, you know, all of that stuff. And then I wind up seeing the value of really being connected. And then, and then those principles that my parents put into me when I was younger about the importance of marrying before you carry and being intentional about how many children that you have and having traditional family values and structures, you know, is really affecting my daughter in a positive way to where now I feel so comfortable with her and we still interconnected with her. And, you know, we still, we still are, are, are very much, we give her a lot of freedom, but she make her own rules because if she can't abide by it, then she now has to be subjected to whatever it is that we tell her to do. But the point that I'm making is that society has basically went down so much to where you should be worried. You should very much be worried about who your children are around, who they're influenced by, how they move on a regular basis, if the people that surround them and even their teachers are even trying to fuck them. I hate to say it like that, but every day, every single day, I see a different story about a teacher that's getting arrested. Is women teachers getting arrested? Yo, I read a story about two teachers in Broward County the other day. One of them was a female and one of them was a male. The male teacher had just one teacher of the year. And he had been scheduling special field trips in order to get with a 15 year old chick. You know what I'm saying? And he was messing with. The other, the female teacher was also messing with a chick. And so, you know, we gotta be very careful. We gotta be mindful and we gotta be vigilant about protecting our children, not only from the people that's in this world, but also, also from the values that's being taught to them by people that ain't of the same cloth as you. Participate in your communities, get involved, know who's who, you know, and, and you can't, you can't buy that shit. You know, that's shit that money can't buy. Um, as far as the values and the participation, you can't get that time back and molding our children to be what we want them to be based off of our values and, and our morals and our compass and our beliefs and our spirituality. Man, we just out here just having children. And every time I see a woman have a child out of wedlock or become a single baby mama, and then they decide to open up their legs to a man that they have no intention to stand with for a long time. And then he's skeeting her. These are the type of things that's shaping our society today. It's shaping our politics. It's, it's shaping our finances and, and the morals and the values that's happening, that's being implemented into them and what they're being taught and what books they can read inside of the libraries. This is happening. This is real life. This ain't even no movie. This is real life happening to our children. We are who we are, right? I'm 41 years old. For the most part, the path of my life is set for whatever it is that it's going to be. But they have a bigger chance that we're supposed to leave this earth in a better space had we not been here. And they supposed to have a better opportunity than us. And the reason that they don't and the reason that society is so messed up today is because we have no morals. We have no code. We doing what we want to do and we remix it. And it's funny because people will get mad at me and say, Anton, your rhetoric is the problem. No, the fact that your children is going to be fucked up because some teacher is trying to get at them or some morals is being put in them that's not of you is the real issue, all right? I love you. I appreciate you. I hope you guys continue to have value or find value in the different shows that we put on on a regular basis. Uh, yes, I am still vlogging. Yes, I will be changing the channel. Mika is going to be streaming on After Hours at least two days a week. Um, and then we're going to figure it out from there. And we're just going to continue to rock. We're going to continue to run it up. We're going to rock. And we're going to do the work and take care of business. And I'm going to be the biggest advocate, not just for men, but for what's right. I love you guys. I appreciate you. I'm going to holler at you later.
Be safe, man. Protect your children.